Hello and welcome to um, this Facebook Live from Grow Traffic. I'm Simon Daly, one of Grow Traffic's uh, directors. Uh, with me today, we've got Mark Preston and Stacey McNaught, um, who I have known or known of for a number of, of years now. Um, we do this uh, little live session every Friday for an hour. Um, traditionally, we have uh, been talking about lockdown and, and just how to survive lockdown. Last week, Hannah, Rachel and I did a bit of a roundup of those sessions, uh, talked about how Grow Traffic had weathered the storm. Um, and now we're, we're, we feel like we're kind of on the other side, feel like it's the right time to start talking to other people uh, and bringing in other people in the industry uh, and other kind of marketing professionals in on these uh, these sessions as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand over first to... I'll hand over to, to Stacey first. Stacey, if you could tell us who you are and, and what, what you do. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I'm Stacey McNaught. Uh, I'm an SEO specialist, SEO and content marketing. So I worked in uh, an agency in Manchester for nine years. Started as a trainee, kind of stumbled into SEO by accident, ended up on the board, um, resigned to kind of go off and do my own thing in a much more family-friendly way. So... And now we're a very small consultancy in Saddleworth, just outside Oldham. Um, there's there's like seven of us and probably won't get a great deal bigger than that. Just offering SEO content marketing services um, in an office surrounded by more sheep than people. It's great. <laughs> Fantastic. Sounds brilliant. Mark, do you want to introduce yourself? Who are you and what do you do? Yeah, I'm Mark Preston. I've uh, been in the industry for about 20 years. I've built agencies, done some training, and now I've packed all that life in to become head of digital for a large group called Hacking Group. Um, I have a, an in-house team of 11, which is uh, growing very rapidly due to expansion. So it's um, for me, I can see things on both sides of the fence, and I'd rather be on this side, not chasing invoices. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've I've known like I said before I've known you two I've certainly I've met Mark in the past so I've, I've kind of known Stacey through your work so if you like online um, so I think we've we've all kind of in 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 our own ways chased some of the same keywords even so that's that's probably where where we know back in the day when I worked when I used to live over in Preston so. Um, SEO Preston was always a big term that we went after, and, and Mark Preston always managed to out-compete out, out me for, for quite a while. <laughs> so, uh, and also, you know, we, we, used to, we used to battle for um, SEO speaker keywords as well. And Stacey, we, we, we're, we're up there for, for freelance SEO consultant, SEO consultant. I always kind of see you for those terms. Are they, are they important terms for you, Stacey? They are. I mean, when I initially left uh, agency side, I was going to go solo completely. So freelance SEO was was pretty much the one for me. And then obviously you kind of end up in a position where you've got no scale. And so I was thinking, oh, I, I don't want an agency. I don't want to be sort of in a fast growth agency with investors. And, and I, I kind of don't like reporting to anybody. So I ended up getting my mum to do some stuff for me. <laughs> and my mum then actually became my first employee. So I still have the freelance site and that still ranks really well. Actually, probably about 50% of our cold inquiries come through that website. So they're right. pretty lucrative uh, keywords really, yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, and what, what kind of, what, so Mark, Mark, what got you in, you said you've been in the industry for 20 years. What kind of, what got you into the industry in the first place? Am I right in thinking that you started off as a as Mark Frozen? As everyone Frozen? Oh. No, Mark Frozen. I think <laughs> Mark Frozen. He, look, he looks like just about to nod and, and, and tell me exactly what where he started. Um, Stacey, <laughs> what, you, you were in an agency at the, from, from the beginning. Was that, um, was that SEO? Was that purely SEO and content at the time? Or? Yeah, it was purely SEO at the time. So, I mean, I was doing freelance copywriting and actually that's kind of what I saw myself doing for the long term. And then increasingly yeah. clients were sort of asking about SEO. So like, I'm going to go and figure this SEO thing out. I figured that the best way to yeah. figure it out would be to take a trainee role somewhere and started with a company called Techmark in Manchester that at the time was just SEO. Um, but actually, I, I just loved it. 
so I ended up there for sort of just short of 10 years but it was at the time yeah purely SEO at the beginning moved into like apps and things uh later on but uh yeah I've always just been out and out SEO I'm crap at paid yes <laughs> I, I was there it was I think at the same time as well similar situation <laughs> Mark, Mark you, you said that you've um, been around for your back, been around for 20 years or so. Um, am, I, am I right in thinking that you, you started out as a, as a tradesman back in the day? Is that... Oh, well, before I got into the, the game, it's um, I was a mechanical engineer and an agricultural engineer. Then is uh, my oldest daughter has a heart condition. So I got to a point in life where I'm thinking, well, I need to be there for her as and when I need to. And literally, I just stumbled into the online industry and started doing SEO before I even knew what, what the term was. It was a case of I set up my own website. I thought, well, how can I get people to them? Let's test different ideas. And it sort of then other people started asking me. That's how it started. I never intended to come in. It's just that I seem to. Oh, he's gone again. <laughs> Mark, this is not my wife. Having some issues. No, no. It's, well, it's normally ours. Are you're, you're up on Saddleworth and we're on the East Lanks Moors. So it's, it's normally us <laughs> that, that, that yeah. all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my journey into SEO was, was accidental as well, really, that, that I started out. Um, in fact, way back when, when I was at, when I was at university, I had this like side project. I used to breed, I, I, I had like a breeding program for pet rats <laughs> way back when. And I, and I was, I was, I was like breeding and selling these, these rats, but a lot of them, uh, you know, it was, it, there was a scale to it. Um, um, I set up a website and, and people came from all over the country. I must have just had the best website, or the only website for, for, for these rats at the time. People <laughs> came from all over the country to, to Manchester and um and you know but but rats off me so I, I started to learn quite a bit from that but it was but after university i went to work for a marketing agency um still quite offline at the time and um eventually started doing some pr for isuzu trucks and it was all online pr and we started to see the benefit of, of including links within the in within the pr pieces and, and at that time, we're talking like early to mid two thousands. It really had a, a significant and noticeable impact, uh, yeah. and that's really what what moved me over into kind of getting a bit obsessive about SEO. And uh, it wasn't long after that that I was I was thrown in the deep end at, with with Google AdWords at the time, about two thousand seven. So, so yeah, that's kind of where my kind of passion for it all all, all came about. Um, Hey, I think I think we've got Mark. Mark's coming back. <laughs> Mark's back. Isn't? You know, there how, are you really yeah, just everything went off. <laughs> <laughs> so much battery and uh, Wi-Fi. You're in, you're in with them, are you? With them for that? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. used to work. I used to work at an agency in Wesham, just off Junction Three of the motorway. And over the top of the of the of the building was the pretty much the only power line that went to the file coast, and you could always the whole file coast went off if, if they were working on this one power power line. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, anyway. I'm back. You're back. You were, you were kind of you were kind of explaining yeah. um, mechanical and agricultural engineering. Yeah. Is uh, like I said, my daughter um, has a heart condition and it was sort of doing something that I could be around for them and um, my, my wife's brother worked for Manx Telecom and he said well I'll give you some free hosting and I said what's that <laughs> so literally I built a website no I lost him again it was that, was that power line <laughs> He's still, he's still, he's still there. He's not completely dropped off the stream. Um, there we go. So how's how's things been? How's things been going for you, Stacey? You've had big, big.
big changes over the last few months, haven't you? So how's lockdown? Yeah. Like Lockdown's been interesting. So, I mean, I spent most of lockdown heavily pregnant. So we had our third son in late May. Right. So for most of lockdown, I was um, heavily pregnant. I actually planned to be sort of doing a little bit less. Um, but obviously, I guess the sheer uncertainty of what's going to happen means that actually I took more on. <laughs> so I uh, didn't need to in the end. We've been really fortunate. So like work-wise, we've been fine. But the it's been a serious adaptation to not just being able to leave the house and go to the office. Yeah. And, you know, the things you take for granted, like childcare. I miss <laughs> childcare. I really miss childcare a lot. Um, so it has, it's been like a really a, a tricky few months, I think, just from managing kids and work and everything like that. But, I mean, work-wise, we've done pretty well out of it. A couple of our clients were really badly hit right. um certainly those in travel and things like that yeah but our clients are from a really really diverse sort of range of sectors um which is something i'm incredibly grateful for over lockdown so we've actually come out the other end of it probably in a better position um, than we went in fortunately speaking so that's been good from work point of view but i think everybody I, i've not spoken to anybody who hasn't struggled with the whole being at home for, for two months with the kids having to try and homeschool um and yeah that and then the the latter stages of a complicated pregnancy was an interesting juggling mix but yeah. you know we're all alive we're all good everyone's yeah. still breathing so <laughs> what, what, what about you you mark what's your what's your situation at the moment you uh yeah we're, we're still we're still working from home the whole team has been working from home and on Zoom every morning. And um, yeah, we, we've, uh, yeah, to be honest with you, productivity has doubled <laughs> because right. so you haven't got anyone um, asking them two minute questions that turns into an hour, as Stacey says. And <laughs> so it's been all right. We're probably going to see what it's like uh, next month, but because the office. This is in Darwin, and uh, still impacted by that power cut. By the look of it, <laughs> yeah. um, we've got Liz, Liz Hall um, on. I'm um, uh, just making a few comments there. She was saying that juggling childcare and working during lockdown has been really interesting. I think I think most of us can relate to this. To be honest, we've got a ten year old boy who is. You know, wants to spend all day in his pajamas. He wants to spend all day with the curtain shirt. He wants to spend all day playing on, I don't know, uh, Fortnite or Minecraft or you know all those types of things. And and trying to not just juggle a business, but make sure that the business is in the right place to come out of this, whilst also trying to motivate a ten year old to to actually get some work done. <laughs> it's it's been tough. It's been it's been it's been tricky, and um, I'm, well, like I said, I'm sure I'm sure um, there are people all over the country that are feeling the same kind of issues with with childcare and yeah. and um, dealing with that. But we are we are we are coming out of that, aren't we? We're, hopefully, you're back in the office, which which is good. So you must have sort of your childcare, out, I suppose. Well, yeah. I mean, my husband is also in the business, so like we we're pretty fortunate in that we can mix it up a little bit. So I've been coming back into the office before anybody else is here um, for a couple of days a week here and there. I, I honestly get like so much more done in the office in two or three hours than I will in three days battling kids. I mean, obviously we've got a nine week old, a three year old and a five year old boy. So they're all mental. <laughs> um, it just, it's yeah. impossible to do anything at home during the course of the day. So yeah, with my husband, and I kind of split things, but when I really need to focus and just get something done, come to the office a couple of days a week, and then the rest of the team is back in from the start of August. Um, probably not the full week. I think we'll still have some flexibility going back and forth, um, but some people found that productivity went through the roof, like Mark said, when they were at home. Um, what's generally happened for most people here is that productivity was probably a lot higher at the start, probably if you don't have children at home, um, and then as yeah. lockdown's gone on, productivity, I've, I've got, you know, two of them have rang and said, 
please come use the office. <laughs> like, can't focus at home. Please come use the office. <laughs> so it's been, I think everyone yeah. handles it in different ways and works better in different locations. I'm definitely thinking about heading back into the office for a day every now and then. Um, I, I, I'm finding that I'm getting interrupted. I'm not, you know, my 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 productivity is productivity is not the right word actually because I'm what I'm finding is I'm working just excessively long hours at the moment and not yeah. properly shutting off. So, I'm, my productivity is probably quite low actually. But um, it, it's um, yeah, I think I will be trying to get back into the office. But again, I want to be kind of responsible, socially responsible. I don't want to. Um, we, we have a shared office at the moment, so we're in a shared office, sorry. So I don't want to be, you know, engaging with too many people and, and put, you know, unnecessarily um, trying to do everything on Zoom where possible. Yeah. What, what about what about what about you, Mark? You you you're back. How are you? Um, how how's it going yeah. with 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 kind of child? I know, I know you were saying about your your daughter, and I know about your your other kids. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, not easy for us. Um, I have a nine-year-old, and he uh, needs a lot of attention, you know, because he's uh, very hyper. In fact, on the day, very day they broke up from school, he turned around and said, can I go back to school now? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, but, um, yeah, it's like everyone. We've just been juggling it as a family to try and get his work done when we can, but still try and get the schoolwork done as well, fighting with them to, you know, it's just been very, very hard work. I don't think there's anybody who hasn't had it that's got children who hasn't felt the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Hannah's, Hannah's asking a question here. She's asking, do you think ongoing social distancing will affect the SEO landscape of it all? Well, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was kind of thinking about how how things are affecting not necessarily just SEO, but but digital more generally. You know, it's been a such a huge change to the way that people um, conduct themselves in 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 life. You know, the communications have changed. Um, I'm a member of of, of a kind of group and and there's a mixture of ranges and i'm seeing that even you know old guys in like their 80s are completely au fait with with zoom and having previously never been able to make their emails work suddenly they're, they're like telling me how to use zoom properly and um i'm starting to see things like that um what what do you guys think about the changes to to dig the digital kind of space and the way we interact with it. Yeah, I think we're going to see a ton more of um, products that might have historically been sold in shops more than online, probably being sold online. Um, I mean, you look at you look at what happened to the valuation of companies like Ocado that are built for fulfilling groceries online compared to, I mean, to be honest, if, if you've done any kind of online shopping with Tesco or Sainsbury, they're so not built for online at all. It's a painful experience getting your delivery. So I think we're going to see more companies that were built for online first, disrupting some of the big offline retailers more so than we've seen in the past. The demographics will change. I think you know everybody now is probably going to be trying to avoid going into shops where they don't have to, really, probably for the foreseeable. Um, and I think that I'm kind of starting to see the signs of it already with some of my clients because during lockdown, some of the big retailers were just unable to fulfill orders. You know, it was like Halford's run out of bikes. Like you got big stores that are just running out of stock and everything. I think we found people prepared to dig a little further to find smaller retailers who did have things in stock. So I worked with some smaller retailers yeah. who actually historically wouldn't have done anywhere near as well as they did during lockdown because they were competing for rankings with massive big retailers, but actually we were finding that click-through rates from lower positions were increasing um, over the course of lockdown, which we're attributing to the fact that the bigger retailers had serious stock issues. So I think from an SEO point of view, it's, and digital point of view overall, it's actually a really big opportunity. 
That's interesting. One of the one of the things I thought pre, I've thought about um, the big retailer like Sainsbury's, which we shop with Sainsbury's on, online, but they're not geared towards. Um, they're not really thinking S, in S, a kind of SEO way. They're they're thinking about themselves as being big brands. They attract people from the brand, um, and there's very few other ways to drop into those websites. Um, Mark, you 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 kind of um, had the digital thing for uh, it's, it's like a kind of conglomerate of opticians. Is that is that the way it works? Is that right? Yeah. It's, uh, uh, how do you? How yeah, I'm going to say is uh, for us is we're a, a group of um, independent opticians, so the largest group in the UK. Uh, so we have hundred plus individual brands, individual locations, and when um, yeah lockdown hit, obviously all the stores suddenly people couldn't go in. Is physical location. So as myself and our team. We had to work 24-7 literally just to get that online um, income generated because our whole focus before lockdown was to drive people through the physical front door, whereas now it's it's a case of every, every location has got their own product catalogue online, whereas, you know, we couldn't offer remote triaging through video consultation. So it's been a massive thing, but it will not go away once the world gets to normal. Because it, we st this year, that's it. This year, is no one knows what's going to happen, and we're in this for the foreseeable future. But it's also highlighted a massive opportunity for us as well that we hadn't gone into previously. So it's a case of the the situation has actually benefited us in one way because we wouldn't we wouldn't have gone into it as rapidly as we have. Yeah. Uh, Dave's asking. Dave's asking an interesting question. David Atkins. Uh, what can be done to recover lost rankings after inactivity during lockdown? Um, I think that's an interesting one, uh, and we've we've seen we've seen the the update in May and potentially update at the start of June. Um, I know grow traffic because we carried on creating content throughout this period, and we saw a big spike in 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 May in terms of rankings and traffic, and we we dipped down a little bit at the start of June. So, but but we carried on creating content um, yeah. throughout the period. Um, and carried on being active. What about those companies that have been have, have, have kind of not been able to maintain that activity? What, what do you think, Stacey? Well, I think first of all, if it's specifically as David mentioned, like lost rankings, I'd make sure that that is down to an activity first rather than something else. Um, so, as you say, big update in May. Um, so, if if the lost rankings kind of correlated with that, then I'd be looking more at what happened in May. If actually it's just a gradual decline since you stopped doing stuff because your competitors have been more active or anything like that, then just pick it up activity. You know, picking up activity, getting back on top of it, looking at what your competitors have done to help them overtake you is a good starting point. But also kind of there comes a point when you have to sort of just put what's happened behind you, um, the fact that you've not done anything, and then go back to look at it like a new campaign. So what are you are trying to rank for? Where's your traffic coming from? Going back and re revisiting your keyword research because keyword volumes are totally different now in some spaces than they were three months ago. Um, and just looking at it like, instead of worrying about what competitors have been doing for the last three or four months, just start now. I think when you start panicking about what you haven't done, you could waste another month worrying about that. So, yeah, you know, right. you can't you can't fix what's done. Just get back on top of it. Anything you can do, if you can put more time in over the next couple of months to try and catch up a little bit here and there, a bit more analysis, then great. But do start with, if, if it's a gradual decline of rankings over a few months, great. You know, you can probably put it down to inactivity. If it's a sudden loss of rankings at the end of May, then um, it's, it's less likely to be inactivity that's the source of the issue. Yeah. And 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 how do you also, so Mark, thinking about that in terms of, so take it if you've got lots of independent opticians 
they're all doing their own own separate things. How how do you manage that kind of the the, the overall marketing um, output, or, or or are they not all doing separate things? Is it all centrally managed? No, well, is um, is to be honest with you, I try and keep as much as I can centrally. Um, so they all run the, their own individual organic Facebook, but most of it is done centrally and controlled by my team. So then I can I know what's happening because as soon as you lose track of where you are, is it all falls down. And the it, if I wasn't on top of it and my team wasn't on top of it all the time, then it just all fall down. And um, considering we are up against the big boys with the endless pockets and uh, we're competing against them as well, is we don't do too bad on that front. Is uh, yeah, Now, group-wise, we're 65% outranking the big boys. Marvellous. And, and, and is that, sorry, it, I'm just trying to understand the structure of that. So do you have separate websites for all the individual yeah. locations? Yeah. yeah, yeah 100 okay. plus websites. Wow. 100 plus websites, 100 plus brands, 100, everything times 100 plus. And it's rapidly growing. <laughs> it's the, there were a new business acquired, even in lockdown, that had multiple locations and is... There's new business coming into the group every week. Yeah. You know, so obviously the onboarding process, I've worked tirelessly on streamlining that. Okay. And do you, I take it you're creating content, adding it to their, to their blogs for them, or are you doing anything like that, news content for them? How does that uh, work? No, it's, it's, it's not realistic um, to create content for 100 plus individual websites no. every week, every month. It's just not realistic without building a massive team up. So to counteract that, what I did, I created a national brand where all the content goes on. Then people can search the specific location nearest to them. And so that's how I counteracted that issue. So, yes, we still do content, but it's on a local level, there's not as much going on um, on that content creation side. Right, okay, that, that makes perfect sense. So, Stacey, what, what about your, in terms of the, your, your clients, which ones have, have really benefited from, from COVID? And yeah, so interiors, so sort of home and garden retail. Yeah. Uh, benefited quite well and then the ones that, that have benefited um basically because of increasing volume uh, so anything around fast food anyone in the fast food delivery type industry um we're working with a company at the moment who do insurance for couriers yeah. massive improvement in things there and i think retail on the whole like smaller retailers who are competing with big brands just seemed to benefit from as i say i mean across pretty much all of them we saw a massive surge in click-through rate from positions, say, at the bottom of page one compared to before lockdown, largely correlating with where top of page one were retailers struggling with fulfillment. So they did pretty well. On the, We've got some health care clients. Some of those did well. Some of them were affected by some government changes and couldn't trade as they were. Um, but some of those did really, really well. So, you know, companies who offer products or services around boosting the immune system, um, overall health and well-being did pretty well. And on the flip side, we've got some companies who rely on gyms being open or dance schools being open. And yep. for them, you know, trade practically stopped at the end of March. Um, that said, though, some of them, a lot of them dropped their paid budget quite substantially, but kept some activity going on. We don't actually manage paid budgets at all. We generally just work with people's paid providers. But um, I think that's that's the thing with paid is we there was still quite a lot of search volume around queries that had previously converted very well hmm. and buying intent just seemed to be a little bit lagging behind so people might still be looking for their ballet dance uniform but all of a sudden conversion rates half of what it was so yeah. maybe the ppc doesn't stack up anymore but from an organic perspective you know it it still can 
So I think um, it's been a really mixed bag, a good experience for some, bad for others. Yeah. Everybody was affected some way, positively or otherwise, though. They were definitely. We we saw that. So um, I think we saw, and, and, and it's this is just a reflection of the type of clients that we're talking to, isn't it? It's we can't say that this is the general trend across the country, but we yeah. saw probably the opposite in a way. We saw quite a lot of um, paid new new inquiries. We got quite a lot of those kind of paid paid search activity, so and paid social as well. Um, so we've, we've taken quite a bit of that on more than we normally do because because. You know, like, like yourselves, we normally focus on um, SEO and, and content and, um, and and go that way. But, but we definitely, you know, PPC, AdWords, pay, pay social, it's always been a bit of what we do. But it's never been the, the bulky bit. And it's suddenly we, we got a, a whole range of, of different companies inquiring about, about that kind of activity during lockdown. Um, more of a direct response stuff, I suppose, that, that, that they were trying to get out to customers with in more immediate uh, kind of manner than, than SEO would, would, would allow, really. Uh, we, at the start of lockdown, we, we just had a raft of, of our clients, our retainer clients, SEO retainer clients, ringing up to pause their activity. Many of them, it was just the knock-on impact of their customers' pausing and so you know so and, and it's really difficult isn't it and and um what about yourself it, i hear what you say stacy in terms of intent mark have you seen intent search intent change through the opticians over the course of the the lockdown yeah and coming out yeah i mean it's um yeah the, the thing is with the optical industry it's a case of there's a two-year window for clients, so for patients. So if they have um, not been able to come into practice within lockdown, well, they're going to come come in anyway after lockdown. So it's not a big issue. Obviously, during lockdown, we had to focus on still serving clients that's broken the frames and all that. That's where all the online stuff come into its own, like the catalogs and everything. But for us, um, actual search volumes dramatically just tanked um, because obviously people are not going to come out of the homes. You know, so mm. it affects the whole business. You know, we had, you know, tireless, it's 24-7 just to, get through the situation it hasn't been easy for anybody by any means obviously revenues being down but from a digital perspective we've still been able to create things that generate some income yeah we we um one of the things that we did that we we've, we've always offered kind of training um as part of our packages but but normally it's for our retainer clients um, that we want to train them up so that they know what we're doing as much as anything else. So, so we're, we're really able to be as transparent and honest with them as possible. But, but during this period, we, we kind of put together some, some small training packages um, that were just kind of a couple, you know, 50 quid here, 50 quid there, just to, just to kind of keep that, that kind of cash flow ticket that kind of cash ticking in in a different way and it's been really interesting i think we 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 had to really think to ourselves not just who our target audience is you know because we were before this before this kind of period we were head down focused on getting to a certain kind of customer and that's the customer that we talked to and at the start of this process we, we kind of had to say to ourselves we need to stop just concentrating on who we want our target market to be, but also take consideration of what our existing audience is and how we can um, really create a service that 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 provide a uh, service product package that that provides for the people that we've already that we are already talking to now, not just the people that we want to talk to. Have, have you seen that as well, Stacey? 
Yeah, I mean, we've uh, quite a bit of our revenue started to come from affiliate projects over last year and personal projects. So I think I've always really been a fan of. I mean, the one of the founders of Techmark where I worked was a, a sales director by background. So tons of the really um, kind of the commercial aspects of business I picked up from there. And one of the one of the big sort of learnings from the agency side early on was not having too many eggs in one basket. So I really never want one single client, for example, to be responsible for more than say eight percent maybe of our revenue. Um, that that for me would be a really worrying scenario. Um, but then I thought diversifying revenue beyond just clients and actually having some of our own projects has been great for training. So people can experiment with things, the staff can practice stuff that we might not get signed off by clients, mm. but also actually has been a bit of a cushion. We're, we're fortunate not to need it, but early on it was quite reassuring for me that we had that kind of cushion there that meant that everyone would still get paid. Um, and actually a lot of my family, I'm really, a lot of my staff I'm related to. So it's just like, it's not just that, not only do you not want to be making redundancies, but in particular, you don't want to believe in the sort of the three people in your office who you're related to <laughs> in, in that situation too. So I was really worried early, um, but we'd been kind of already sort of diversifying revenues before that, which was a bit of a godsend. And for me going forward now, it just emphasizes just how much, how much of a critical part of the business that's going to be is never, ever, ever relying on either one sector, one client or a small handful of clients to keep the money coming in. It's just, this was probably the, the least predictable thing that could happen. Yep. And, and we could be stuck with it for some time. Mm. So I think, yeah, the, if the one thing I take away from it is just diversify and then diversify some more and a little bit more after that. I think, I think I'd agree. I think um, similar, to, similar to yourself at uh, Grow Traffic, you know, um, my wife, is, is is a director of the business my sister-in-law director of the business um you know the family ties that are in, involved in that and that's that's that that is both has benefits and and uh, drawbacks as well and and one of those big drawbacks is you you know if you if your whole income comes from the business which our whole household income comes from from this business it it can't, it can't fail. You know, we've got to make it work one way or another. And, you know, so we did di diversify our kind of product offering, focused on on some training. Liz, Liz is um, Liz saying that the, the blog, our blogging course is amazing. We've had loads. Of, it's, it's one of the things I've been really proud about, actually, that we, we had loads of people taking that blogging course. And um, it, it's not just that they, they took it, but, I can see the actionable results after that. I can see them, people blogging. I can see that they're using our approach to things, um, which is industry standard, let's be fair, but um, they're, they're doing it. And, and, and it, it was just the uh, impetus that was required to actually get them to, to, to start acting on it. And we, lots of the people that, that took that course, we've known for a long time, you know, businesses that we've networked with and um, people that we talked to. And we've been telling them that they should be blogging. <laughs> and they, they probably all knew it, but, but this is just giving them a kick to actually to actually do it. Um, yeah, so it has been has been really interesting times. Um, you, you said about um, kind of the the kind of affiliate side of things. How, how do you see the future of your business then, in terms of SEO, affiliates, software? I suppose. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've done we, uh, the projects are across a, a range of different sectors, a range of different monetization methods. And I guess for us, it's still pretty early days, experimenting, learning. There's a few new things starting. Um, I I always see myself doing some client stuff because there's some sectors that I like working in that I would never launch a business in. So like, I really like working in healthcare um, from an SEO point of view and from a digital PR perspective and content creation perspective. I would never want to launch a business in healthcare, like the logistics side of it. The yeah, I'd be terrified of something going wrong, being responsible for killing somebody. You know, I would never launch a business in that sector, but I like doing the marketing in it. So I think there'll always be some client stuff for me, but I like the idea of having, say, about half the business revenue coming through projects that um, we run ourselves. We're not there yet, 
but that's where we're heading. And I think that for me then gives us the flexibility of the client stuff where actually it's good practice to be good at dealing with compliance teams and going through sign off and being brand sensitive. But at the same time, I think some of your best learning comes from projects where you don't have to worry about compliance and you don't have to go through brand sign off and you don't have to get stakeholder buy in. You can literally just say, I think this is going to work right now. I don't have the data as to why it's a gut feeling and I'm going to go and do it. And actually, if you're working with a big brand, very rarely can you say take a, a kind of fairly off the cuff idea to a brand board and say, I want to run this and it might not work mm. and it's a bit unusual and it's totally off brand, but just let me do it. Like, you know, it doesn't yeah. always work like that. So I think for me, that balance of having your own projects for learning and revenue driving and then client stuff as well is pretty much a nice sort of setup for me. Absolutely. Mark, you and I have, have spoken about this really in the past. Um, I, I think that, that, that people who set up in their own business, I know you've set up in a business, but now, now you're, um, you're working in, within, a, within an organization. But, um, and, we, and we've all done the same. You know, we've all worked client side. We've all worked in agencies um, in, in that respect, kind of. But um, I think that people who set up their own business often do it for a couple of reasons. They either want to make loads of money, at which point they're going to have to bring in the venture capitalists and they're going to have to bring investment and, and all that type of thing. Or they want to control their life in some way. They want to give themselves that like, lifestyle and that more more control. Um, well, I think I think that I I naturally gravitate towards the kind of I want to have a lifestyle out of working. I I don't want to be getting up at you know half past five in the morning and getting on the bus at twenty to seven and getting home at half past seven every night. You know that's kind of why pulled out of working in corporate space in Manchester and um but, but yeah what, what do you you mark you you've seen it from all the sides what what's what's your general thought on things at the moment sorry for me it was I was gonna say it's um for me when I started out quite a couple of decades ago, I had this idea in my head that I was never going to take investment on because if it didn't work, they're only me to blame. And I stuck to that. Was it the right decision? I regretted it now and again. Uh, but at the end of the day is I never blamed anybody else for the positives or negatives of the business. And actually going through the years, there has been lots of challenges. I have made lots of money. I've also lost lots of money because of decisions. That's the nature of the game. That's the, the learning curve. But ultimately, it's a case of you do it for a nice work-family balance. But half of the time, never. This is the first time I've actually been able. So obviously, it seems to be every time I'm on holiday, I got like five times more phone calls than I did when I wasn't on holiday. It's it would just um, it would just that would never be enough. And obviously, trying to mix the the life balance and when you've got children. The, so uh, the challenging and the need your attention it's it's often you know very hard you know yeah. going through it and um, yeah I mean that was one of the the reasons I packed everything now it's yeah. I mean, I've been through the, the mill of, you know, re, you know, getting confused, but now I'm over all that because um, I deleted my website so you could rank instead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Doing us a favour, appreciate that. 
Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I've said previously that I I can't imagine ever going back to working full time for somebody else. Um, I can't imagine ever being on call to somebody else, um, kind of twenty four hours a day as as I previously have been. Um, but on the other hand. I've worked some. I've, I've worked some seriously long hours over the last few months, and and I I can see the benefit of of just turning up and collecting a paycheck as well. So uh, you know that's that's. Um, but but like 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 you were saying as well, Stacey. I think from from Grow Traffic's perspective, we are not just looking at diversifying the the offering that we've got in terms of um, some of those. Uh, training services and, and the kind of traditional kind of SEO and digital services that we already offer, but we are talking about software solutions that we need to build. We're talking about um, acquiring a property in order to, you know, have additional revenue streams that both protect the business and us individually. So I think that those those learnings are, um, are something that everyone's probably going through right now. Yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, I could never imagine working for somebody else now. And I could never, one of the reasons that I have absolutely won't take investment either is because I don't want to have to answer to anybody else. Like, mm. I'm just not, I'm, I'm fundamentally unemployable. Um, but I kind of see the benefit. I know some of my friends who were homeschooling and stuff over lockdown, who'd been furloughed. And I was thinking, I'd, I'd love to be furloughed. <laughs> like, but, you know, the, the, the downside, I suppose, of, of running your own thing is that, you, you you never you are you're either giving up and, and letting it go or you're in it like yeah. Yeah. unless you go for the model of yeah bringing in you know layers of management and um the scale and which is not something i'm i'm interested in so for me it's it's a lifestyle business i have three very young children and a rather busy life and i honestly have no idea how parents who do a nine to five and have children how 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 do you do that? How do you do it? Like, I can't. How do you pick them up? Well, how do you keep them alive? I don't know how I, to do it. So, so I, uh, Rachel, Rachel was, was, um, Rachel was, you know, working in grow traffic and for grow traffic while I was still kind of gainfully employed in marketing roles in corporate Manchester, all the rest of it. Um, but I think when I started working, for grow traffic full time when I came came back on board full time, um, I worked out that it was probably the first time that I'd walked my little boy to school and picked him up on the same day in in five years. You know, and, and that's and the the damage that has on your relationship with your, your children, the just 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 a simple thing of proximity of not being near the home. Um, it means you're not involved you know, you know it's, it's not your whilst it's your responsibility you can't impact it in the same way and and even when you get back things have been done or you don't have the headspace or all the rest of it, it i think that one of the things that we i hope that we learn from this whole experience is that 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 culture that ethos has to change Oh, yeah. Carry on like like that. I know. I know you're. You've got your guys coming back in the start of October, haven't you? Are you going to work kind of flexibly in that point? Yeah, I mean, we've always been pretty flexible anyway. So everyone drives here. They live pretty local. Everyone's at about a ten minute drive maximum. Um, so everyone's coming back in August uh, into the office, and it'll be. I don't think there'll ever be a day in the week where everybody's in the office. So there's always some degree of flexibility for people to sort of work at home here and there. Um, there's certain activities that we've definitely found are better in an office. Yeah. So creative brainstorming. I am so sick of Zoom. Like <laughs> if I get one more Zoom invite, you know, I, I might have to seriously consider sort of boycotting Zoom permanently. <laughs> like I'm sick of Zoom <laughs> and I'm sick of video calls. And you can't do, not this one, obviously, you can't do the same sort of creative brainstorming on Zoom as you can when people are just sitting in an office chatting. It's not the same. Um, I mean, I don't think we kind of hail this work at home as the future. I don't think that's necessarily it. I think what it is, is we've probably accelerated 10 to 15 years because of COVID towards more flexible working. So for me, it's like work where you work best. Some days I work best at home. Some days I'm best in the office. Some days I'm best in an Airbnb in the middle of a forest. 
Yeah. So I think that it, rather than saying everybody should be allowed to work from home forever and the office is dead, for me it's more like the office is a central place for everyone to come together when we need to. And for longer term, not right now, but longer term for your clients to come in and see you and you can do things in person together that you can't do remotely. But ultimately, I think, yeah, flexibility, people work. Some people just work best on certain days in certain places. And that's humans. The idea that you can expect a human being to be productive by sitting in front of a computer in an office at set hours that are based on what's convenient for you is, is ludicrous. That's just not how humans work. Not how we've evolved, is it? <laughs> this, is, this, is, this isn't like our natural state sat in front of a, a laptop like this. I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of flip charts and um, and, and, and post-it notes and, and trying to yeah. come up with ideas that way around. And I, I often run kind of branding sessions and all the rest of it. And I could not imagine trying to do a proper branding session over Zoom. I just, I can't imagine that I could make it work. I'll try, but yeah, some things just are just much better done in person. Absolutely. Uh, what, Mark, what, what about yourselves? Are you, you guys all, you're all working from home now, but are you, are you going to be? How, how, I presume that your kind of top level management team and the admin team that goes with running the 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 um, I keep keep wanting to say conglomerate, but it's not a conglomerate, is it? Is it a, a franchise? Yeah. The, the thing is, it's not like a corporate where I work. It's like a family. And the only person sort of, uh, well, try and tie it down to get some questions out of as a CEO himself. So it's, um, it's, it's a bit different. So as a department, as a thing, I just literally run it how it needs to be run. And uh, But it's moving forward. We'll never be 100% office-based and we'll never be 100% home-based. There's always going to be a mixture of everything because I am one. I love the team to get involved with the ideas. I'm not one to say, there's a checklist, that's what you must do. I'll say, if you've got an idea, let's all get around the table. Let's discuss it. Let's get a pizza in. Let's get some drink, you know, just let them get the, you know, chart up. You know, sticky notes on the wall, that kind of thing. It's just, let's talk about it because every person's got a good idea. and But you can't do that the same with online. I've tried and tried and it doesn't come across. Some people don't even like turning the, the camera on. You know, mm -hmm. it's they don't interact, have to force them to talk, whereas in the office it just comes out. It's all natural. So is moving forward is depending on what happens because the office is based in Darwin and the restrictions in Blackburn and Darwin at the moment, depending on what happens with that, when it's safe to do so, is we'll start going back maybe two days a week. But it won't be the full team all at once two days a week. We'll stagger it and see. But ultimately, we are... Uh, determined by the situation at the moment. Ultimately, safety is paramount. That's that comes regardless because it's people first, and then but is yeah. I mean, there's obviously many days in lockdown. I've begged to go back to into the office. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me. Just you, let me you and many, back. many more parents. I think around the country, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're coming up to the close really now. Um, just just a few more kind of little things I wanted to to kind of talk to you about. Really, what one of the things that I, I just wondered, what have you missed the most? What do you miss the most now about pre-COVID kind of life? What what would you say? I mean, for, for me, I'm I'm really enjoying kind of lockdown life. You know, even even though we're coming out of it now, I still I feel very blessed for what we live. We live on the Lance Moors, we've got a lot of land. We're very fortunate, but lots of people aren't in that situation. What what about yourselves? What what do you feel about what do you miss about pre-COVID life? Yeah, I mean we're lucky too. We've got a lot of open space really close to home, but what I really miss is events. Yeah. So not just like speaking at events, it's catching up with people like who there's people now who I literally only see at events and it's always great to catch up. Um, I really, really do miss events. Um, I think I'll probably do less traveling 
in future, even when lockdown's fully lifted. Agreed. But there's certainly a couple of events each year that I really look forward to catching up with people at. And yeah, now I'm starting to really, really miss that. <laughs> and Mark, what about yourself? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's just that personal interactivity with people. It's it's like going into the office and chatting about whatever. And, you know, it's just that personal interactivity where certain things, you know, you talk about that you won't talk about online. It's just how it is. Is they like yourselves, you know, I live on the coast. That You know, it's two minutes walk from the beach. You know, so that side of it, it's been lovely. But... I think um, as far as traveling is concerned, is I do a lot of traveling anyway with this job, you know, going up and down the country with the new businesses we acquire. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of things that's now gone on video that we don't need. Uh, so it's a mixture of both. It's, it's a case of I can see pros and cons from all sides. And personally, is there's reasons I love both sides. Yeah. Um, right before we wrap, before we wrap it up, uh, final thing is is either what what have you what have you kind of learned? What's the most important thing you've learned during this period that you think would help a uh, business owner? Or have you got any resources or any apps that you'd suggest people should be using? Um, Stacey, what, what would you put? Yeah, I think biggest learning for me. I think we've kind of already suspected it, but there's literally no point in trying to work through. Um, <clears throat> particularly bad days like you know if you've got a day where the kids are going mental you're just at the end of your tether actually sometimes you need to do is turn the computer off go outside walk refresh your head give yourself the, the time that you need no one can work when they're at the end of their tether like it's pointless so I think that's kind of something I'll take even back into the office if I'm having a particularly bad day then sometimes I'm just going to go walk <laughs> and then come back to it later yeah. resource wise i think um that it's not my own but the one thing i think anybody doing seo at the moment would be well worth checking out is a presentation that shannon mcgurk from era gave at outreach conference back in june so that the deck is on slideshare somewhere about the realistic expectations of outreach and digital pr so i think that there's uh, the more people i speak to who are doing this job at the moment who are having kind of crises of self-esteem because it looks like everybody else is getting 33 trillion links per blog post um <laughs> shannon gave it a really really good sort of take on what the real scenario is yeah. um and actually anyone i know who's working in this space and i've been pointing them there um just about a reality check on the fact that we all have bad days bad pieces of work and kind of you know it isn't all sunshine and roses yeah mark have you got yeah. any any learnings or any resources that you'd like to point out? Yeah, I think uh, the biggest one that's uh, come out in this lockdown is just talk to people and honestly uh, tell them how you're feeling and show, you know talk about problems because in the past I've tried to hide a lot of things and it, it's built up and up and during this lockdown I've had lots of conversations and being honest and open and it's really helped um you know because there's another side to you know everyone being in lockdown it's not just uh financial it's also mental well-being and i find is talking to others even if it doesn't solve the situation it, it helps and it's uh i think that's the biggest takeaway that i personally had and uh like i had never ever mentioned about my family before it's but now i, I do um as far as resources concerned, I actually was uh, doing some reading during lockdown, and this book is by uh, Phil Jones, exactly what to say, was uh, actually made an awful lot of sense from marketing perspective, from sales perspective, and what to say on the website, when to say to people and everything. And it's just, it's not so much about what you're saying it's how you're saying it and everything and it's just like it's like a, a light bulb moment and um yeah i think for me during lockdown this, this is the one of the key things that uh, suggest people um go and read go and read don't worry i'm going to 
an affiliate link. It's, it's all right. <laughs> Just go and buy. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Mark. I, I was going to say I, I've I've put put some work into my own kind of. Just my own mental well-being, my own, my own kind of headspace. Trying to be—I think I got into some bad habits before uh, before lockdown, and it gave me time to to reset some of those, to think about some of them. Still got loads of bad habits, I think, wrong, but, um, I think I think that's been really beneficial to me. Like you said, Stacey, get on the get get out of the house, walk things off. Um, don't try and work days and days in a row because you'll just end up burning out um yeah which which i've done during this period i've i've worked three all-nighters which um is bonkers and i need to have a word with myself about that but um, in terms of, of resources i think those are all really valuable i've been listening to podcasts by some early googlers um i think i've listened to three now and i think there's some really interesting insights um in those into how the business started, some of the 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 rationale for some of the way that the business works, um, and a lot of it's motivated by the finances, you know, and it, and it just kind of the things that they do now are just an amplification of that uh, of that process. But also, um, kind of tying back to what you were saying before, Stacey, about outreach and and uh, link building. Um, I read it yesterday. Was it yesterday? Or the day before? Something by. Um, uh, Dennis from uh, Cert Trust. He was he was just talking about um, the way that the the types of domains that that SEOs in, traditionally go for. You know those um, all those those kind of spammy kind of SEO blog websites are out there and stuff. And it, it was a, a well written and research piece, with, and it was quite. I agreed with everything that he said when I read it, and then he put it out on one of the Facebook groups, and case started to get slated by all those SEO people who said, I disagree with what you're saying. Yes, but it's a big footprint. Really. Yeah. Good old SEO Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, yeah. we'll have a good debate. Some people debate better than others. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's some good stuff going on online at the moment. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you very much, both Stacey and Mark, for taking the time to, to, to come and do this with me. I really appreciate it. Um, come back next week, guys. We've got another Facebook Live uh, next Friday. And Rachel, Hannah and Marisha will be, uh, will be uh, shooting the shit on Tuesday, I think it is. So come and see that then. Great. Thank you very much. And I will press the stop button now. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.